Ladies and gentlemen, I've received word that many Zerg players in ZBZ have been making a bunch of Ling Bane and defending with a bunch of Lings against Ling Bane attacks and taking horrible trades. So I wanted to just take you through a game here and we're going to look at what my opponent is doing and how I'm deciding where to move my Lings and my Banes and where the fights are taken. Because I think a lot of your success in ZBZ Ling Bane Wars isn't just about can I micro my units? It's about where do I decide to send my units? So I'll just zoom through the early game here. I opted to go for a gas pool hatch build. Just because I don't know my opponent, it allows me to be the aggressor and also have units out a little bit earlier if they cheese. So we're scouting this, getting my bane nest, putting my four lings on the map. And I saw it's hatch first, so I have a little bit of time to see if I can take an initiative. This overlord is watching this exit from my opponent's base. This overlord is watching this exit from my opponent's base. So if any lings leave their base and head toward mine, I will see them. And these lings are checking for this third. The lings are checking here. And I saw my opponent has already invested more larva and lings than I have. I only have four, they have six. So that makes me think that I'm in a pretty good spot in terms of drones. I went pool first and then went hatch first, so I'm doing pretty well here. I killed that overlord, and then I'm sending a drone over to make the third. And this is a maneuver, this is an ancient technique passed down generations. Uh, I believe the wise Jedi Master Day9 TV, he said attack and expand. So what I'm doing right now is I'm attacking with wings and banes off of 23 workers, and I'm expanding. So I have options. Maybe the attack works and I get ahead. Maybe it doesn't work and I have a third base that I can defend. So I could be the attacker or the defender. One really crucial thing about Ling Bane, if you want to attack, make sure you're morphing the Banes on your opponent's side of the map. If you make the Banes on your side of the map, it'll take about 45 minutes plus change to run all the way across before Bane speed is done. I exaggerate, but still. Make them on the opponent's side of the map. Having a couple leading Zerglings here is really good to check for Banes. You don't want to run a huge clump of Lings blindly up to the up the ramp. There could be a couple Banes up there. So I'm just checking here. And then with my Lings, I just right click a Queen. And then I move commanded the Banes. You can see the mark right there. The Banes are moving through the Lings to this location. And I want to take this Queen out. Every Queen that I take out, I create a Larva advantage for myself. Because I have a Queen here. I have a queen here, and this third base is on the way. So I'll show my vision and kind of talk through how I'm deciding what to do. The banes are just running up, and these lings right-click a queen again. And I'm just move commanding my banes. They're not attack moving. They're just doing zone defense of these lings. So now I can see my opponent has no queens, and I have 27 drones, which is cool. We took a decent trade there, and I just made a couple banes just to be annoying. So I'm going back to injecting, I'm centering my camera, and I'm going to make a bunch of defensive banes now. Because I created a larva advantage and I have a base advantage now. So I want to make sure I can defend their next swing, and if you look at the minimap you can see a bunch of links coming my way. I have my queens on a control group. And I'm just move commanding these banes forward, and then I attack move whenever I feel like they're going to take a good trade. I just stole nine links to a different hotkey, and these links are going to get sent around. So I sent these links up here, and then they're going to be rallied down here, and then into the opponent's base. This is the essence of taking really good trades against an attacker in Ling Bane fights. A lot of times you think to yourself, oh, my opponent is attacking me. Let me get my army back home to defend. It's basically worthless to send Lings to, uh, to defend this. Three Banes are attacking here. I want to use either Banes or Queens to trade against this effectively. If I have a bunch of leftover Lings, I don't want to send nine Lings into this. I don't want to send 20 Lings into this. If I have Lings left over, I want to send them around the map and into my opponent's base. 
So I'm just making Bane, so I want to make sure I never run out. So I always have some defensive units. My third base is coming up here. And then another trick I did there was pull off the backlings that are running across. So a greater of them will chase my links. So this is a good trade for me in terms of investment. If these links chase these links, I'm getting more value from these units than they are from these. Sun Tzu said, a smaller force is but booty for one which is larger. So this would be an example of that. I tried to right click the queen again. And by sending those links in, you also get information on what their tech is and what their drone situation is. And I just repeated that process again. So these 16 links, they're not in my main army group. They're in a run around the map and deal damage kind of assignment. I'm running my banes across. I'm trying to inject my bases again. And we're going to check for a third. I'm just making Ling Bane all over the map. I'm also pre-splitting the units. See how I have two in the front. That was a mistake by me, not really the best. But now those links can take a good fight. And then I have more links coming in. They right click the queen. So I have another larva advantage. Bane's hit pretty well. And then we go back and inject everything. Having Banes rallied across the map is pretty good, just a couple of them like that. You have a lot of chances for the opponent to just run into your Banes with a whole bunch of Lings when they're not expecting to take a fight. Since I had zero Banes, I'm going to make some more. I always put my Bane Lings in the fifth control group. In ZVZ, these kind of Ling Bane fights, I never have my Lings and Banes in the same control group. They excel against very different units, so if a unit if the Lings are going to do well against something, the Banes usually don't, and vice versa. So I just continue to send Lings around. I'm not sending those Lings into the Banes at all. Maybe you could box two of them at a time and then send them into the Banes. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just send the Lings into their base. Your Roaches, your Queens, your Banes can defend. That was a good hit by them. But they GG because we have another round of links in their base. And they were trying to kill us with about 20 workers. So the most solid progression after the Ling Bane stuff would be Roach War and Evo for plus one range attack. Making sure you have one queen to each of your bases. Injecting them and then getting Lair for the Roach speed. Hopefully this helped you to understand decision making with your movements of links and banes in ZVZ Link Bane Wars. Good luck.